Your Flows. The formless expression of love. Mind understands love as a form. It cannot conceive love as the formless expression. For transformation, formlessness of love is the beginning. Transformation is a process of conception. Before it begins, you have to be clear in your mind. And out of such clarity, decision can really be arrived at. A new process begins immediately following this decision. You understand that through conception, a new life begins its growth process. This growth has two aspects, the womb and the seed. Womb means receptivity. The seed is received lovingly. Although the seed comes from outside, however, immediately it is planted. It is not only received lovingly, instead becomes the part of the womb. The womb provides congenial environment for the seed to begin its new journey. At the end of the journey, a new life is born. This process we know as sex and conception. Transformation, on the other hand, begins differently. The seeker approaches the master soon after a process. Soon after a process, both become lover and beloved. Seeker becomes the disciple and finally the devotee. Seeker is on the surface of the water. With disciple, the process of diving within begins. As diving gains momentum, the seeker dies. No more seeking. Seeking now leads to being. And as diving gains momentum, the disciple too dies. And out of that, the devotee is born. The master and the devotee are now two sides of the same coin. Exists as lover and beloved. This state of lover and beloved is not the same as you have known or understood. It is the beginning of the journey from form to formless, from matter to beyond matter, both now ready to enter sexless sex a state of conception. Sexless sex a state of conception. The womb is prepared through receptivity, loving and lovingness provides the soil within Trust nourishes the soil. Surrender provides willingness and readiness for the conception. The seed of consciousness. The seed of consciousness is implanted within the womb. The disciple is now conceived. He nourishes the new growth within and at the end, devotee gives birth to a new beingness, that which is thus born out of this conception is awakening. Now not really a growth, instead a new being out of the devotee. In Vigyan Bhairav Tantra, Devi asks Shiva, O oh Shiva, what is your reality? Who are you? The form has disappeared. Hence the question comes in. The moment the form of the master disappears for this devotee, 
then these questions are bound to happen. Unless this happens and the form of the master disappears, the seeker remains seeking alone on the surface, trying to gather knowledge, but the real process does not begin. In love, you enter the other as yourself. It is not you answering, it is not you answering, you become one and for the first time you know an abyss, a formless presence. That is why for centuries together, centuries after centuries, we have not been making, we were not making any sculpture, any picture of Shiva. We are only making Shivlingam the symbol. Shivling is the symbol, is just a formless form. When you love someone and when you enter someone, he becomes just a luminous presence. Shivling is just a luminous presence, just an aura of light. That is why Devi asks, what is thy reality? Beyond the form, the reality of the lover and the beloved, the reality of the lover is a luminous presence, an overflowing presence, but has no form. And really in deep love, the form disappears. The lover and beloved both dissolve into one another. What is this is why Devi asks, what is your reality? What is this wonderful universe? We know the universe, but we never know that it is wonderful. We do not, we never know existence as wonderful. Children know the universe as wonderful. For lovers too, this universe is wonderful. Field. For children and lover both, this universe appears as deja vu. Such is the state of innocence. Only in innocence does children and lover, lovers see universe as wonderful. Wonderful does not imply expensive and exclusive items. Innocence is an expression of deja vu in eyes. Innocence is the way you look at the universe around full of wonder. Sometimes poets and madmen know, but we do not know that the world is wonderful. Everything is just repetitive, no wonder, no poetry just flat prose. It does not create a song in you, does not create any dance in you, no poetry arises within, the whole universe looks mechanical. Children look at it with wonderful eyes. When the eyes are wonderful, the universe appears wonderful. Such is the state of Devi as she asks Shiva, what is thy reality? The question opens a vast universe for the one who has dared to ask such question. When you are in love, you again become childlike. Jesus says, only those who are like children will enter the kingdom of God. Why? Because the universe is not a wonder, 
unless the universe becomes a wonder for you you cannot be religious if the universe can be explained then your approach is scientific the universe is either known or unknown but that which is unknown can be known one day it is no more unknowable the universe becomes unknowable a mystery only when your eyes are wonder filled when form disappears your beloved becomes the universe the formless the infinite suddenly devi becomes aware that she is not asking a question about shiva instead she is asking a question about the whole universe now shiva has become the whole universe manifesting through everything sentient and insentient everything around has become mirror like and reflects her lover now at all the stars are moving in him and the whole firmament and the whole space is surrounding him now he is a great engulfing factor the great encompassing carl jespers has defined god as the great encompassing when you enter love a deep intimate world of love the person disappears the form disappears and the lover becomes just a door to the universe your curiosity can be scientific one then you have to approach through logic then you must not think of the formless then be aware of the formless and then remain content with the form science is always concerned with the form if anything formless is proposed to the scientific mind he will cut it into form unless it takes a form it is meaningless first give it a form a definite form only then does the inquiry starts in love if form is still exists then there is no end to it dissolve the form first and in deep love the form really dissolves and when things become formless dizzy without boundaries everything entering another the whole universe becoming one oneness the whole universe becoming a oneness then only it is a wonderful universe only then it is a wonderful universe and unless in deep world deep love you do not get this vision this innocence where everything seems wonderful you you are far away from the journey to initiate enough for now